GM or genetic modification of crops and animals has been going on since farming began. The term is a relatively new one, was actually changed recently with the method, implications and reasons for this modification. At the start of farming, crops and animals that produced high yields, more meat or more wool, were used to breed from, gradually making farming become more productive. However, uh, because it wasn't organised or planned in any kind of scientific manner, it happened only very slowly, and within the same country, you'd often get several different varieties of the same crop or animal. And whilst this meant that food surpluses only increased very gradually, it did also mean that environmental impacts were minimal, and a particular strain or variety became vulnerable to a pest or disease, only that local crop was likely to be affected. Later on, people began to deliberately crossbreed plants and animals with a specific purpose in mind. This whole process dramatically accelerated just before the Industrial Revolution. For instance, crossing two forms of sheep, one which produces lots of wool, and the other produces lots of meat, resulting in a sheep which both produces more wool and more meat. This did mean that certain varieties now become popular due to their increased yields, and others which are no longer profitable were discontinued. Crop yields now dramatically improved, allowing more people to be spared from the task of farming, allowing to work in other areas, hence the Industrial Revolution. However, with fewer varieties, it did mean that occasionally some kind of blight or disease could severely damage the harvest. The result, however, was only normally critical when areas relied heavily on a single crop or animal for their main food source. And this crossbreeding has become more scientific over the years as the mechanisms for inheritance have been discovered. This now led to the latest, most controversial stage of modifying crops and animals, which is a targeted introduction of specific genes into the genetic makeup of the plants and animals for a specific goal. Now most of these introductions are merely a more accurate way of what has been done for millennia. However, along with these are some more questionable elements, some of which overlap. For instance, breeding resistant disease has always been a key feature of the farming process. However, now the genes being introduced to make plants resistant to specific herbicides or fungicides like Roundup means that they can increase the use of such measures over other methods of control that might be more likely than it would otherwise have been. New introductions also include planned plant sterility, meaning that Although the yield is increased, the farmer can't actually reuse the harvested crop to replant the following season, has to rebuy new seeds from the supplier each year. And the third major change is the introduction of new genes which actually don't exist in the local gene pool at all. They're introduced from outside, and though the initial benefits may be positive, their interaction and long-term consequences may not be known, especially if the genes then make their way out from that specific plant or animal and into the general population. So that leaves us the question, are GM crops and animals safe and ethical? It depends is the answer. The majority of it certainly is, as it's just a more efficient way of actually what's already been happening. Uh, when companies use it to promote other products or controlled seed reuse, and it's dubious to say the least, and introducing totally new elements to be, needs to be closely regulated before they can be used on a mass scale. So GM is positive for the future, but it's a cautious positive.